What's going on everyone, Kellen Reck here, and today we're gonna do a quick tutorial on glowing scribble effects. Now, if you've ever seen the Blotter Media Instagram, these effects have been used all the time over there. Check some of these out. It's a really, really cool look, and it's honestly pretty easy to do. So let's dive in, and we'll check it out. So going into this, I wanted to make my own example that wasn't just the Blotter Media one so you can see exactly what we're gonna learn today. So right here you'll see my own special example using some of my footage from the Red Sox. Did some glowing scribble drawings over it and got, uh, got this final look here. Check it out. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did here. Now obviously, I don't quite have the artistic drawing skills that Blotter Media does, but you can see that you can still use sound effects and a lot of other things to help sell the effect that you're looking for, and you can get a lot out of it, and that's exactly what I did. The sound effects really helped carry the piece. So always remember that. Now again, the easiest way to do this is if you have a Wacom tablet or some kind of tablet that you can actually physically draw onto the screen, but I'm just using a mouse for this example and it works perfectly well. Obviously you can't get quite as detailed, but you can still do a lot of really nice drawings with it. So to do this, we're gonna open up After Effects, dive in, and we just need some raw footage to actually use. So I have a compilation here of Mookie Betts footage that I put together as you saw in the example, and I'm just gonna drag it into a new composition. So if we scrub along, you can see I've got all of this footage of Mookie, and we are going to go in and actually build out this effect. Now, rather than do all of it, I'm gonna focus in on one certain area, and we'll focus in on here where I had some sort of electrical charge almost glow off of him. So we'll just go to the first frame of this particular part of the clip. And all you need to do to start is just, once you get to where you wanna start drawing onto your frames, double click on the actual layer in your footage here. This will bring you into the layer panel as you can see up above. Now what you'll need is you're gonna to need to use your brush tool. So you just click up here on your brush tool or command B. And you'll also wanna enable a few things to be seen over here on the right side. You want your paint uh, option and you want your brushes. If they're not there, you can go to window, make sure you have brushes and paint selected. That'll let you choose a few things that we're gonna need here. Now the first thing that we want to do is go in and make sure that the duration is set to single frame. What that's gonna do is that every time we draw, it's just gonna carry on for one frame. Some of these other options have a few different effects that we don't need to worry about in this particular video. So make sure single frame is enabled and I also want to um, change my color to green for this one. So you can change the color that you're actually painting. I'm just gonna go for a bit of a neon electric green color. Choose anything you want, even white, and we'll go with that. Okay, so now you can see I've got a circle on my screen. That is my paintbrush, and I can actually go in and start drawing. So to start off, I'm just gonna draw. You can draw whatever you want. We'll go right over the number 50. And it's just a rough drawing. That's a little too rough. I gotta go back on that one. And we'll use page up and page down to move along a frame. So you draw on one frame, page down will bring you to the next frame. You start drawing again. Page down, you go to the next frame, start drawing again. And you can do whatever you want here. So obviously this has the numbers, but then let's try something different. So on the next frame, we'll have the numbers sort of jump out and make an electric charge around him. So I'll start to have a line pop off of the numbers and you can do whatever you want here. Any look you might find to be cool. And those lines will start to outline his body, at least his jersey. And remember, we're just drawing on one frame and moving to the next. Now they'll start to fill up his jersey whatever you feel that you might want the look to be, you just go along and draw out the frames. So perfect, and this obviously can take as long as you want, you can get as detailed as you want to actually draw it out. So I'm just gonna speed ahead 
and show you a fully uh, drawn out version of this. One moment here. So now you can see we've gone in, we've actually drawn out all of these frames. So I've got the number colored in, spreads out to his jersey, then it sort of creates this charge that goes out into the stands and all over. Again, not the craziest of drawings. I'm just not necessarily the greatest uh, drawing artist, but if you are, you can really make these pretty awesome. So it doesn't matter though, as long as you can have fun with it and create something cool, which we're doing here. So the next step, once we have our drawings, is go to the first frame of where your painting is applied. And when you're there, go to Layer, New Solid. And this solid can be any color you want. What we're gonna do is copy our effects onto that layer so that we can apply some new effects to it. Now, I like to label this based on the section that I'm working on. So we're gonna call this Mookie Jersey. Uh, just because if you aren't familiar with baseball or the Red Sox, his name is Mookie Betts. He's one of the best uh, players on the team. So that's why it's called Mookie Jersey. Call it whatever you want. Um, just whatever applies to the section you're working on. You could just call it Jersey. You could call it Layer 1, whatever you want. So we've got Mookie Jersey here. Now I like to break this solid up into a smaller chunk. So the way we do that is make sure we're on that first frame of the paint. We hit option left bracket, cuts it. We go to, I'm just gonna turn it off for a minute so I can see here, we go to the last layer of the paint and option right bracket will cut it as well. Now you can see that our solid is only this chunk. And the reason we see the white solid is again, we're in the composition layer now. We work on the painting in the layer layer, <laughs> the layer layer, and then the composition we can see both here. So let's head back into the layer look right now and just go to that first frame of the painting and click on your original layer that you painted on. Go down to effects, click on paint. We're gonna command C to copy it. We'll go up to our new solid, command V to paste it. And if you go back into the composition layer, you'll see that the paint is now applied to our solid. And the next step is to click on that solid and check paint on transparent. That'll get rid of the white background or whatever color you chose for your solid. And now it'll just show, if we isolate it, it'll just show the paintings that we did. The next step is to go into your footage layer, go to the paint and delete it. Just hit delete, click on it and delete. Now that paint is only showing up on our solid here. Now this is where things start to get a little bit fun. Let's go to the actual, I'm just gonna go to this frame right here. Click on your solid, and the first effect we want to apply is a glow. Now you see that we're starting to bring this to life. So your glow threshold may change based on the color you're using. Different colors uh, are affected by the glow in different ways, but generally I like to aim for about 60 for my threshold, about 30, for my radius and an intensity of about five. Now, this isn't quite the look we want. It's got a nice glow, but we want that white center with the colored outside, sort of like a lightsaber glow effect. So what do we do for this? Well, go to your glow within your solid, command D to duplicate. Now we're gonna make some changes to the second glow effect here. So the first thing we wanna do on the radius is, or sorry, the threshold is make this one five. And you may wanna play with this again based on your color, but I'll pretty much adjust my radius until the middle looks white. Now go to a larger solid here. You can see if we're up high, it's a weird yellow color. We'll keep dragging it down. Usually once I'm at about five, the middle turns white. I'm gonna change my glow radius to 15, and I'm gonna change my glow intensity to one. And that'll bring out that popping color. So the inside is this white electric bright feel and the outside is the color that we drew. Now if we play it back, you get this really awesome looking electrical feel and the glowing light. Now if we turn off those glows, you can see it's just that original drawing, not nearly as exciting, adding the glows and we get that awesome look. So this is the basic way to go about your glowing scribbles effect, just frame by frame drawing add it to a new solid, and then add the glow effects. It's really quite easy, but there are a few things I just wanna quickly go over that I used in my example that can spice it up and add a little extra to it. So if we go over to right after he hits the ball, what I did was applied a crown over his head that then was tracked and stayed with him. So rather than drawing each frame, I just drew one frame, extended it out, and then gave it uh, a track that it stuck to. So the first thing we need to do, 
go into our layer, double click on the option. This is where I want the crown to start after he hits the ball. So I'm just gonna go in with my brush tool. We're gonna get a yellow, nice yellowish golden crown. And I'm just gonna zoom right in and we'll draw something quickly. All right, cool, so we got it, the home run king. He's got a big old crown over his head. Awesome, so now what do we do? Well, remember when we applied the painting as a single frame, that's not gonna work well for us right now. See, if you go into our actual painting within the effects, you can see it's just one frame. And if we move to the next, the crown's gone. So what I wanna do is actually drag these two paint things out. So if we go within our clip, effects, paint, you'll see the two brushes we applied. You just have to click on them both and drag them out for the length of the clip. Now we can see that our clip goes to about, about here. So we just need to drag the clips to be that long and it'll disappear as we move to the next clip. Great, so we've got the crown and it's just staying where it is to start, but we want it to move with Mookie as he runs. So we need to apply a tracker. Now, if you don't have your tracker down here, you wanna go up to effects, or sorry, you wanna go up to window and make sure that the tracker window is toggled and it should show up down here. Now, before we actually apply the tracker, I wanna put it onto a solid as we did before. I wanna put the paintbrushes onto a solid so that we can apply the tracker to that solid. So, remember what we did, we go to the first part of the paint. We're gonna go layer new solid and we're just gonna call this one crown and we'll make it as long as our sequence is here or as long as our painting is here. So again, option left bracket at the front. We'll go to the back, option right bracket, made that a frame too long. Got our crown and go to the first frame, click on paint, command C to copy. Go to your crown layer, command V to paste. Delete the paint from the original clip. Go back to your composition layer. You can see we've got the crown. Click on the crown layer, paint on transparent. Perfect. Now you can choose to apply the glow now, you can choose to apply the glow later. I say we just do it now. I'm gonna pull from my previous clip. I'm gonna copy the first glow. We've got the glow. Now if you choose to go back and copy the second glow and apply it, it's gonna overwrite your first glow. So you need to make sure you just go to the new glow we just put on the crown layer, duplicate it again, Command D and then we can change everything. So our threshold of five, radius of 15, and our intensity of one. Now we've got a nice glowing crown over Mookie's head. So now we wanna actually track it. So in order to track our footage, we'll first click on the original layer and go to track motion. So now we've, we're given this track point here. And in this case, we just wanna track the position. If you have something moving in and out, you might wanna start tracking the scale too, but because he's staying on a similar plane and about the same size, we're just gonna worry about our position here. Now we'll go in and I just wanna target the point right in his ear because that's probably the best marker of what's going on here. And that'll track right to his ear. So we're at the front of our solid here and you can just move either frame by frame, watch the tracker, or you can let it play out. I don't always like to let it play out because of what just happened. It tends to miss the point. So because there's not too, too many frames here, we can just go frame by frame and ensure that we are staying within the ear. You can do it individually, manually, or let it do it by itself. We'll just speed this along. So once you have all of your tracker points applied, you can see that the track point is following Mookie's head. You wanna edit your target. And right now we want our target as it currently is to be the crown. And so we'll just head over to the first frame of the crown and we'll hit apply in our tracker panel. Apply to X and Y dimensions, okay. And you can see now if we go up to our crown that it's actually following his movement. There's a slight problem, it's off from where we want it to be. So what you need to do is go to crown layer, go to the first frame of it, hit P. You'll see all of your positions are keyframed. If you click on position, it's gonna highlight everything. Then all you need to do is just drag the actual frame to where you want it to start, right over his head. Get it right there. And now it'll actually track right along. So you can see we've applied the effect and it's gonna move with him. So you can actually draw out a custom painting, have it move with your clip as a part of your clip. So once you go through and build out your full sequence, all of your drawings, 
I usually like to export out the full sequence and bring it into Premiere and start to apply sound effects that might help sell some of what we're working on. And I just wanna quickly show you how I did that for my version so that you can see some of the things that I did to help sell my you know, mediocre drawings in some cases. So let's check that out now. So you can see in Premiere now, I've got my exported After Effects drawing or clip with the full scribbles on it. Sorry, I've got allergies right now and my eyes are very watery, I apologize. <clears throat> so we've got scribbles on this drawing, the ones we made, here's the electrical part. And what I did was I applied certain sound effects to help sell these effects. So if we just play this normally with the music underneath, it's fine, but if we play it with the sound effects, it adds a little something extra. And really all it is is just an electrical charge sound effect. So I'll go through after I draw and say, okay, what might look good here or what might sound good? Well, this sort of looks like electrical charges. Let's add an electrical charge sound effect. Or you might remember in the example, I had this drawing, this random scribble flying around him. So I added some whooshes, listen here, that adds, makes it feel like that's actually coming alive. And of course the wings, I added a wing sound effect that helps sell it because, you know, they look like they might be wings, but you know, if you had a real artist, they might look better. So I wanted to add something extra that could sell the effect. And so we add wings. So you can really do anything you want with these, but adding sound effects, adding the glowing scribbles can sell it and make it look so much cooler. And it's really an awesome effect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave a comment down below, leave a like on the video. Definitely subscribe if you're into these kinds of tutorials, any filmmaking tips, photography. I post videos every Wednesday at 10, at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. Wednesdays, with the goal of helping you become a better filmmaker and photographer, so go check them out. We'll check you back in the next one. Thanks, guys. Quickly before we go, new feature in these videos called Auto-Tune the Comment. Leave a comment down below that you wanna hear auto-tuned in next week's video, and that's how we'll close out every video moving forward. So for example, we'll look back at one of my original videos. West TV commented, someone who talks to the point and knows what he's doing, how great. Auto-tune the comment, leave one down below.